Price was on the hustings at pre-poll booths in Hobart on Saturday, and will campaign in Adelaide later in the week before returning to Alice Springs to vote. Indigenous Australians Minister Linda Burney is also expected to visit Tasmania and SA early next week, as will opposition leader Peter Dutton. In an eight-minute video released on her social media channels on Friday, Price delivered a, here's why you should vote no, pitch, outlining four reasons including a claim that The Voice, blames Australians for the mistakes of the past. Ian Yench said Prime Minister Anthony Albanese wasn't clear enough in his messaging around The Voice, resulting in him voting no. Credit, Nikki Short. Ian Yench said Prime Minister Anthony Albanese wasn't clear enough in his messaging around The Voice, resulting in him voting no. Credit. If you're being told that Indigenous Australians lack a voice, you are not being told the truth, she says in the video. At Marrickville Town Hall on Saturday, Inner West local Ian Yench was unconvinced by the Prime Minister's overtures. There wasn't enough information handed out by Albo about what's actually in it, he said. Yench had not done independent research about the voice and said he should not have to, Albo should just spit it out. Quote, Max Marmo and Isabella Nicolau, who also voted in Marrickville, said they knew as soon as the referendum was announced that their vote would be a resounding yes. Max Marmo and Isabella Nicolau knew they would be voting yes as soon as the referendum was announced. Credit, Nikki Short. Max Marmo and Isabella Nicolau knew they would be voting yes as soon as the referendum was announced. Credit, it wasn't even a conversation. Perfect is the enemy of the good. And with small steps, we'll get there eventually, Marmo said. While it's an obvious choice for the couple, they are not hopeful the rest of the country will follow. It'll be upsetting and disappointing. For us, we feel like our generation will feel less guilty if the voice is passed. Quote, no voters Jocelyn Murray and Pauline Horder said there needed to be more time in the lead up to the referendum to educate people. The pair, who live in Bathurst, voted at the Penrith Panthers headquarters in Sydney's West. Horder was worried that the voice could see the Australia Day date changed, or extra taxes implemented. As an advisory body, The Voice would have no formal power to do either. No voters Pauline Horder and Jocelyn Murray holding a cutout of NRL star and Yes supporter Nathan Cleary. Credit, Nikki Short. No voters Pauline Horder and Jocelyn Murray holding a cutout of NRL star and Yes supporter Nathan Cleary. Credit, we needed more information about what exactly they're sitting in, Parliament for, every single person I've spoken to has said the same thing, she said. In Box Hill in Melbourne's eastern suburbs on Saturday, Foreign Minister Penny Wong headlined a forum on The Voice held in Mandarin where she said she was concerned about misinformation deliberating targeting the Australian Chinese community. That's why we're here today. I think the Chinese community should be treated with greater respect and people should engage with them on the basis of facts. Quote, Dr. Jing Qi, a researcher at RMIT University who helped organize the forum, said misinformation and false claims about The Voice, such as that it would lead to tax hikes and land grabs, have been running wild on social media, including on Chinese-language platform Weibo. Foreign Minister Penny Wong at Box Hill in Melbourne on Saturday. Credit, Eddie Jim. Foreign Minister Penny Wong at Box Hill in Melbourne on Saturday. Credit, I'd just been debunking it myself online. But the last month or two I've really noticed it get bad so a few of us banded together to try to get through to the community. Quote, Liberal frontbencher James Patterson, who is coordinating no volunteers in booths across Victoria, said he was buoyed by the response of voters at pre-polling booths in Caroline Springs in the Labor seat of Gorton in northwest Melbourne on Saturday. I have never had a more positive reception on a booth in my 20 years of campaigning. It was an overwhelmingly no response from a very diverse range of people, old and young and multicultural, Patterson said. The South Sydney Rabbitohs also released their position statement in supporting The Voice on Saturday morning alongside Albanese. Anthony Albanese and Tanya Plibersek with Rabbitohs CEO Blake Solly, Centre, in Redfern as the club announced their support of the Yes vote. Credit, Nikki Short. Anthony Albanese and Tanya Plibersek with Rabbitohs CEO Blake Solly, Centre, in Redfern as the club announced their support of the Yes vote. Credit. Speaking outside the club headquarters in Redfern, Rabbitohs chief executive Blake Solly said the 30 players, managers and other staff members met last week to learn about and debate The Voice. It was very loving, and it was very considered, he said. We hope that this change to the constitution will ensure the progress is achieved where it is most needed. Quote, players, including Latrell Mitchell, have previously said they needed to educate themselves before publicly supporting The Voice. The NRL became the first football code to publicly support The Voice in May. The Morning Edition newsletter is our guide to the day's most important and interesting stories, analysis and insights. Sign up here.